Man, oh man, it's raining cats and dogs today. We're supposed to get three quarters of an inch of rain today, which if my math is correct, converted to metric would be about 326 centimeters. It's a lot of rain. I had planned on doing a video today about forage analysis because we got our hay test results back, but given this weather, it's gonna have to wait for another day. Instead, today, hopefully, with any luck, I'm gonna get the MD started again. In the week or so since you last saw the MD, I've done a lot of work. I got the back half in relatively good shape. Yesterday I re -un I unsplit, I guess is the word. The tractor put the two halves back together. That went really well with these jacks that my dad made for the splitting stands because I could get everything aligned just right. I've got the rear wheel rims all cleaned up and painted. They look nice. The rust wasn't too bad. Just mostly concentrated around the valve stem hole, which is what happens when you have loaded tires. But it's just surface rust it's not anything real bad no patching required and new rear tires are being shipped to the tire store i'm just waiting for them to come in so the tire store can mount them and then we'll put them back on the tractor and it'll look really good so for today the plan is to at least get it started even though it can't roll anywhere just to make sure everything is in order and to do that i got to finish up wiring here hook up the battery put the fluids in the transmission put some diesel in it hopefully if everything goes well She'll be running by the end of this video. First thing to do is to finish up the battery cables and I just have this one left to go here. Put this on. This lead goes on to provide juice to the electrical box. Are you a half? Yes, you are. Nothing's caught on fire yet. I guess I'm good to go. Here's the electrical box cover, light switch and ammeter. I went through the light switch and cleaned it up. I took it apart. There's just three screws to take it apart. Cleaned up all the contacts inside. These things are bulletproof. They're made to last forever. Unfortunately, all this one had was a bad fuse. Everything else works right. Originally, this is an older style light switch. It had a resistor here to resist field to ground on the generator uh, to reduce and increase generator output for a cutout relay generator. And then it had a resistance coil for the lights here to dim the lights so there's a dim setting on the switch. I took those off. Those things tend to get hot especially with 12 volts and I don't need dim lights and I don't need a resistor because I have an alternator. So we have an old four position light switch but I'm only using it as off and lights on. Pretty simple. So first I'll connect the wire that hooks up to the headlights eventually even though I don't have the headlights on yet. I will pretty soon. And this wire, when it's all hooked up, comes up the post and then splits off to each side to power each headlight and the wires run through the cross arm that the lights are mounted to. This wire that's the hot lead coming in from the starter switch needs to be shortened a little bit. So I'm making a connection for that. Put some heat shrink tubing on here. Take care of shrinking that up. I love this stuff. Makes everything look professional. Next thing to do is to hook up the jumper from the ammeter to the power in on the switch. So this is the power in terminal. Wrench, wrench. You're a 3 8 aren't you? No, you're in 11 30 seconds. Weird wrench size. No, you're not. You're metric. What? The metric bolts on this tractor. Ugh. Ten millimeters. What's that the equivalent to? Thirty-six inches. Is that it? Yard. Ten mil. Yeah, I think that's right. Thank goodness for color-coded wires. Ten millimeters. I can't believe you. Ten millimeters. Huh. This is America. We use imperial measurements. Then we can close up this electrical box. It is done. It's funny, these old farm halls will run the lights regardless of ignition, so the lights can stay on with the ignition switch off. I'll bet you that's been a source of a lot of dead batteries over the decades. Even the lights on. Oh, I didn't notice the switch was on. Hey, it's upside down. We don't want to do that. That would be goofy. There. 
Just as a quick test, we'll see if we got juice coming through the light switch. I hooked up the battery. Volts DC 20. Take one of these guys, turn the switch on, touch ground somewhere. There's ground. Yep, 12 and a half volts. Let's make sure when they're off, there's no voltage. No voltage. We're good. Well, we got the meter out. We might as well check juice to the coil. We got juice. We're all set there. And to make sure the starter's hooked up properly, let's turn the ignition off and bump the starter. Oh, I think it's going to start. Next, I have to bolt the fuel tank in place. And it gets these little springs on the mounts in case the tractor torques or the fuel tank wants to twist to keep the seams from breaking. It's a little bumper the fuel tank gets along with a rubber washer up here that the fuel tank actually sits on. Then we get a castle nut on the bottom of those. I'm going to have to paint these with a brush later on because I forgot to paint them. Bend that down. There. Next I got to put some coolant in because the packing nut on the front of the water pump under here was leaking so I had to take it all apart. This is something I did last winter and put more packing in it. So that meant I had to drain some of the coolant. One thing I don't have, well actually a bunch of things I don't have yet, because there's always a big laundry list of little things you need at the end, is I don't have a new muffler. I wanted to put one of the restoration quality mufflers on that actually has baffles in it. That's versus the El Cheapo Stanley muffler, mufflers that are readily available. But I only, I think only one company makes them and they aren't in stock anywhere right now until May at least, so I still have to run the old muffler for a while. That looks full. Well, is that water pump leaking? I don't see any drops. Hopefully I got that fixed. Now we got to put in gear oil. 13 gallons to be exact. EDW90 gear oil. Nice thick stuff. Alright, the transmission's got its full 13 gallons. There's a level plug right down there. When it comes up to the level, you stop. Let's check for leaks. I don't see anything there. Nothing coming out of the center section. That's good. I would say that we're good. And of course, we have to fill up the lift all pump, the hydraulic pump. And I use the good Excella High Tran for this because that's what I run in all my other tractors. And this will be interchanging hydraulic cylinders with the other tractors. So, about six quarts of Excella High Tran. By the way, this whole part is not complete yet. I have a, an optional two-way valve tree that goes on here that I haven't cleaned up and rebuilt and put on yet. So what the tractor will have in the end is it'll have the usual hydraulic rod that comes off of the actuation valve here and comes up to here. And then there's another holder that goes on the side of this that controls the two-way valve tree. So you turn the main pump on by pulling the first lever back and then you can use it like modern two-way hydraulics coming off of this tree here. You'll see it later on. Something I'm going to get to after I have the basic parts of the tractor together and the sheet metal on. And I'm going to want it for hang season and running the hay bind with this tractor. By the way, the reason I still have the splitting stands on this tractor is because the rear support is really narrow and of course it's just on the narrow front end so these give it a little lateral stability until I get the rear tires on. Then the splitting stands will come off. And we'll put some diesel in the shiny new gas tank. Shiny new old gas tank. Open up the tank valve and let the diesel flow. Now then, next step, you remember all this mess. We've got the auxiliary filter, which some people would call primary filter. Then we've got the final filter here, water trap, injection pump, and the, the circulation of the diesel is a lot more complicated than it is with modern. So the fuel supply comes down from the tank, comes in here, goes into the water trap, then goes into the auxiliary filter over here, what we would call primary filter, then goes to the charge pump here, builds pressure in the charge pump, goes back out, goes through the final filter, and then goes into the injection pump for the final compression and distribution into the cylinder. So we have to bleed the primary or auxiliary filter first, and we just open this valve up on top and let the air bleed out. 
takes a little while to get up there. But I can see fuel running through the water glass here. So it's running in. Just takes a little bit. There we go. Well, it took a few minutes. Get diesel all over my paint. You can't leak anymore, tractor. I've been chasing leaks with this since day one. You can't leak anymore. I've paid my dues. I remember in one of my tractor collector books when I first read about how the Farmall ND MD is set up, they said it's a complicated little world in there, and it sure is. Piping and connections all over the place in here. Now we can put some gasoline in. Gasoline? What do you mean? It's a diesel tractor. Starts on gas. If you remember, I spent a long time working on this gasoline tank. It's clean as a whistle now, and I had gas in it for two months sitting. Didn't leak a drop, so I'm pretty proud of that. It was full of rust, garbage, leaks. Now it's good, we hope. Did I say that diesel fuel compresses? Someone will catch me on that and say you can't compress a liquid. Well, you can, but not like a gas. It pressurizes it. No leaks down here. Open up the valve. Crack this to let some air out so it'll fill. There we go. Put this old muffler on for now. That light's gonna get wasted. I guess I'll just take it down for now. Okay. Well, I'll open up the shop. Huh. I don't have a diesel throttle hooked up. I'm gonna have to take care of that. Don't scratch the paint. Well, let's see, we got a Woodruff key to put in here. I'm gonna have to clean the paint off the shaft to get the collar on. That ought to be good enough. Well, I had to look at the parts book to see which way the linkage went. We got her on though, just tighten it up. What is that, two nine sixteenths? It is. Never mind what's behind the curtain. That's my next surprise. <laughs> All right, tighten this up. Put the compression release lever into the gasoline position so that the carburetor bowl can fill up with gas. I'm gonna have to put a clip there for those cables. Well, I guess it's time to crank her over and see if she'll start. Fingers crossed.
Back to diesel. I'd call that a successful test run. It ran really well. I only had one minor leak at the final fuel filter, which crank of the wrench seems to have taken care of it. No other leaks. Of course, the real test is when I come out to do morning chores in the morning and I come in here first thing and look to see if there's any spots on the floor of anything. <laughs> That's always kind of the big test. What's coming up next? Well, I've got to get the rear wheels and they should be at the tire shop today or tomorrow. Get those put on, then put them on the tractor and then I can drive the tractor out of here and work on the sheet metal, debt repair, do welding up some rough holes, putting a new screen in the cowl, all that stuff. Get that all cleaned up and painted and then it'll really look like a new tractor. There's lots of bits and pieces to finish up, but I'm well on my way. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Oh, you know, one more thing I got to thinking about it, and you know, I could probably do without rear tires and just drop this right down and make it into a low rider tractor. The belly of the tractor would be like, I don't know, that far off the ground. I think that'd be pretty cool. Lowrider. Yeah.